Hello, everyone. Welcome to this user training. Um, I'm Zheng Zizhao from Nurse User Engagement Group. Before I go on, I, I would like to uh, thank Professor Jim Cooperman from Northeastern University and uh, his um, PhD student Yao Xu and, uh, and more people in his team. And I would also like to thank Rebecca Hartman Baker for helping with the slides. So this is my outline. So I will um, start with a short introduction and then brief overview of MANA and then talk about how you can run jobs with MANA. Uh, and then we will uh, have one hour hands-on session. Okay, so I know everybody should know what is a checkpoint, but just to get started from the same page. So checkpointing is the action of saving the state of a running process to a checkpoint file. And then the process can be restarted later from this um, checkpoint file and continue execution. I mean, why use checkpoint to restart that nurse? Uh, you know, checkpointing is uh, the major uh, approach in fault tolerant computing. And uh, there is um, integral to many future plans at NERSC. So for example, in 2025 timeframe, uh, we expect to increase the real time workloads on the system. It may be even harder to schedule your jobs if you are not running real time workloads. Checkpoint can enable long running jobs and then also it improves queue turnaround. CR approach-wise, we have uh, application-initiated checkpointing, and I believe most applications at NERSC have some level of internal checkpoint and restart support. But they, usually, they are limited and inflexible, uh, and also the application developers have to keep maintaining the checkpoint restart code in, in their applications. So um, another approach is transparent checkpointing, and this is more flexible. So you can stop and resume at any point of execution and no extra work for the application developers. It is vital for system level checkpointing. So we are interested in looking into this option. So, but the transparent checkpointing actually is really hard, um, especially when we talk about use it in production. So the major issue here is it's labor intensive and highly complex. And because we have ever changing you know, HPC systems and then also the, the diverse workloads that run at all scales. So the itself is really hard. And then one of the major issue is the maintainability of CR tools over many NPI implementations and the, many, uh, the network um, it runs on. Also, there's some other difficulties like it's a low priority compared to research and also some other issues. So we selected this uh, MANA tool. This is uh, uh, MANA stands for MPI Agnostic and Network Agnostic Transparent Checkpointing. So MANA achieved the MPI Agnostic by not checkpointing MPI libraries and it achieves network agnostic by training the network before checkpointing. So the idea is really neat. You know, it doesn't care what MPI you use and what kind of interconnect you use and MPI uses under the hood. So this is a huge step towards um, ready to use CR tools for future HPC platforms. Uh, the MANA is implemented as a plugin in DMTCP, um, a transparent checkpointing tool that leaves completely in user space. We did a training back in 2019, I think in November. So I suppose some of you are familiar with the DMTCP. DMTCP is a coordinated checkpointing. It uses one coordinator per computation. So for each job, it can have one coordinator for uh, each computation. Uh, and then one checkpoint thread per process. So this, this circle stands for one user process. And inside, there is one checkpoint thread. So one process, one checkpoint thread. Between this coordinator and checkpoint threads, uh, they coordinate, they pass messages, use the socket and operations. 
So at each time, so either the checkpoint thread is active or the user thread is active. So, but not both at the same time. The MTCP back up the checkpoint files. So your job get terminated at the, when it's doing checkpointing, you, you will still be okay to, to be able to restart. And uh, another big advantage is also this DMDCP lives completely in user space. So you don't need help from the admin and you don't need root privilege to uh, deploy this approach. So MANA, since it's implemented inside the MTCP, so it uh, inherits all those um, the advantages um, of in the MTCP. Uh, maybe I should mention a little bit more. So here, uh, the MTCP is a tool that do traditional way of uh, checkpointing. So it has to take care of all the MPI implementations and uh, uh, the, the interconnect. <coughs> So as a result, um, it doesn't work on Cori, uh, I mean the Ares network and Cori Ampage and, and Cori system. So, so far the MTCP have been used for threaded or um, um, serial applications on Cori, but now this, with MANA, now we can checkpoint for MPI application. So MP, uh, MANA employs a, a split process approach so that means in a single memory space, you have two separate programs called the upper half program and the lower half program. So in the lower half, it only stores those MPI libraries and whatever it depends on. And then upper half will store the user application. So at the checkpoint time, only the upper half, uh, the memory will be saved and then discard this lower part. And then at the restart time, MANA will start this, uh, it's a dummy MPI application. So if it run, start that first, so initiate MPI library, and then each rank will read the checkpoint file. And at that point, point the execution will, um, the context will flow to user application, and then user application will resume its execution. So MANA's uh, network agnostic is achieved by draining the network before checkpointing. This is an example of MPI collectives. So they add these trivial barriers before the actual collective calls. So the, the real collective call only starts when all the uh, ranks reach these trivial barriers. And, uh, and then this will prevent the checkpoint get initiated when uh, the application in the in the collective and calls. So that way um, the MANA can assure that no checkpoint uh, is, is done during you know, some ranks you know, are in the collective calls. So MANA, uh, since it's built on top of the DMTCP, so it uses DMTCP commands like DMTCP coordinator and the MTCP launch and restart and, and all these commands. But for the convenience, um, uh, developers provide these scripts. They are dash script to uh, wrap corresponding com the MTCP commands. So this is the one, the coordinator command, you need to always invoke that for each job or each computation. So this one will oversee all the checkpoint and restart activity. And then you need to use MANA launch to, to launch your application and then use restart to, uh, for your restart jobs. And this one MANA status command is a wrap for the DMTCP command. You can do uh, on-demand kind of checkpointing or remote checkpointing uh, remotely uh, uh, you know, using this command. And you can use this help uh, dash dash help option to see more option, uh, more information about uh, the command line you know, options available. And one thing I want to point out is man, I actually use the minus H uh, argument, I mean option for its host, uh, where the coordinate host is one. So you, you should use dash dash help to see the full uh, options of each command.
So um, uh, the mana is, is still like a very experimental at this stage. So when the mana paper um, published, they measured one time overhead using 64 has well nodes up to 2048 MPI ranks. So they used five applications and reported uh, less than 2% of um, you know, runtime overhead for these four applications. And then for the Romex, they reported 4.5%. But actually this work is um, based on Cori. So this data was for Cori. And then with a kernel patch, I put the link here so you can see more detail for that. The Gromax overhead brought down to 26. So these are all great work. Uh, and unfortunately, I think recently, after many code changes, we also um, uh, roughly run this runtime overhead and observed the very high overhead. For example, for Azure, we see this high, this much high. And for KNL, it's even higher. Uh, so in general, this is application dependent, but this is abnormally high and actually the developers identified the cause of this and actively trying to fix this. So we hope to get this fixed down to, you know, probably one digit level by next week or another kind of. I hope during this time we, we still um, able to use this to test how it works with your application. And also, um, we hope to use uh, this time period to shake out more bugs and issues in the, in the this MANA tools. And regarding the checkpoint overhead, this is also um, uh, application dependent. It's uh, depending on how big the memory or your job is using the IO time, the checkpoint overhead will be different. Uh, so this is some test our summer student did last summer. So the checkpoint in time yeah, depends on the performance of file system. So using raster and post buffer. And this experiment did with HPCG up to 512 MPI ranks. Uh, this is on, uh, this used eight open MP threads per task. So it basically it used the 4,096 cores. Um, so here you can see that on first buffer, you see much lower uh, overhead and then the total memory dumped out is about five terabytes in this test. So for our last file system, it's about um, you know, 10 minutes for uh, writing, checkpointing, and then restart has about you know, one, yeah, 110 seconds for restart. Uh, so this one, I think you, for your application, you need to do the test to be sure, but this is some reference number. So the MANA status on Cori is uh, still it's experimental. So we expect more bugs and issues come up once real applications use with this. And so far we tested with various VASP workloads. Uh, so we, I can, more confidently say it works with VASP better, but we still need to uh, fix a couple issues. So we hope um, it runs, you know, in the in a small scale, but uh, not yet. Um, probably not with not with the large scale ones. But these works are all planned for this summer. So we will have a uh, Yao Xu from Northeastern University. Will fix all these things in this summer. He's hired as a nurse team in this summer. And we also have static linking issue. This is not supported, and uh, we will add this support by this summer. And then GPU support is not available as it as it now, but it's planned for Parameter uh, as well. So there is a good work from this team as well. Called Crack works only for one GPU now. We hope this uh, can be worked smoothly for parameter with uh, some of this work. So now we, we go through some uh, JavaScript, JavaScript and how to use MANA. So uh, to use it, uh, you need to uh, link your code with a uh, 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 MANA library. So MANA library is just uh, the wrapped. MPI 
APIs. So um, you need to link that. So to do that, um, you just uh, do like module load mana, and then you just compile as you would normally do on Tori. But remember, it, it now uh, requires the dynamic linking. So Tori default now is dynamic linking, but I suppose some applications are still doing the static linking. So this should be um, dynamically linked. So that's the only thing. And regarding this Darshan and ALTD, we didn't uh, test, we just wanted to avoid the extra complication, but uh, you may try, ALTD should be harmless, but the Darshan uh, maybe because it also kind of intercepts the NPI calls. So probably you should unload Darshan to use this. And then regarding the run and restart, you just do get the compute node and then you do mouse load and start coordinator. And here you specify how often you want to do uh, checkpointing. So this one do every 30 seconds into you know, one checkpointing. I'm uh, sure in production, it should not be this short, but for the demo purpose, yeah. And then you run your application with the mana launch and then your job get terminated, then you can restart with this. Again, load the coordinate, run the coordinator, and then run manual restart. And then you can do this again and again until you're done. So um, if you, regarding this linking, I think if you use compiler wrappers, it's easy. You just uh, do compile, you compile normally, but for manual linking, for whatever reason, if you need to provide a library, then you can provide this after loading the module. This is a batch script example. So let's just say originally you want to run job like this uh, on Haswell, then you can do like, like this now. So again, you just load the module, start the coordinator, and then run your application with this mana launch. And then at the restart, you just run manual restart. So this is a similar, but uh, to make your job uh, better backfill, so you can use this time minimum option. Uh, you can specify whatever you think reasonable for your job, uh, but you can see for flex queue later, um, we require this minimum time as two hours. So this flex QoS is for you to use um, it's for checkpoint restart jobs. So benefit of that is a high, I mean, very high charging discount. Uh, it's 75% on KML and 50 on and Haswell. So the Haswell uh, Flex QoS is uh, just recently created. So you can use uh, minus Q Flex and then specify the minimum time as two, minute, uh, two hours. So this is the example of using uh, flags. So for KNL, uh, now the example is for hybrid um, MPI and open, uh, open MP code. So you just use flags and then specify time minimum, and then to set your, your own setting, and then load the module, uh, run coordinator, and then also run mana launch, and then restart is the same. So this process actually um, can be automated. So I think I don't uh, want to go through very detail this variable time job scripts that we have been um, providing user training for. So this is uh, to compensate uh, some extra work for users. For example, you want to checkpoint to restart jobs and you have to you know, manage the multiple resubmissions, et cetera. So, this variable time JavaScript uh, is, uh, can be used to simplify this process. So this one is uh, actually has no more than additional aspects, directives, and best functions in your Salon JavaScript. And then once you add them, then your, script, your JavaScript can you know, just automatically resubmit itself until the job done. So it's much more convenient than you do manually. I want to give one example of a variable time JavaScript. So this is your original one. So we have this max wall time limit and 48. So if you want to run even longer, then you may have to resubmit this after 
for the ATM complete. And then for the, uh, this is the variable time job example. So basically you add these red lines here, those are aspect directives, and then a few best functions here. So at the end, so use this uh, aspect directives and then best functions. Uh, now it can automate the job resubmission process. So um, I want to point out here, uh, you can specify your desired runtime using this comment thread. It can be longer than 48 hours. Uh, and then also for using flex, you need to use this time minimum two hours here. Uh, this way you, you allow the batch system to allocate whatever available time for you. As long as it's between somewhere two hours and 48 hours that you want it. And then this is the trick that uh, you know uh, it triggers the checkpoint and restart action before terminating uh, the job. So the batch system will send the signal sometime before the job hit the wall time. And then upon the signal is received, some actions is get taken. So here, when this USR1 signal uh, received, this functions I and mean, the actions defined in this function will be uh, executed. So these functions are defined in the MERSC module. They are just the simple bash functions. And then the actions defined in these functions is uh, first is uh, it executes a checkpoint command, uh, which is defined here. User can provide that. But usually this is additional checkpoint command you want to specify. And then it will requeue the job and then update the remaining wall time. So this is what uh, variable time job does. So uh, now with MANA, actually it is much easier to use this variable time job script. So as, as I showed earlier, so this is the for manual resubmission, you would do two scripts, but they can put it together with the if block. So basically this part of the script when it now goes into um, this part. And then second part here, restart part goes to here. So this is a simple, just to put them into one script. And then the additional um, aspects directives in the, this yellow box, and then these functions in the yellow box, they execute, uh, they implement the automation. So this is an example of how you use MANA to do this uh, variable time job script. So you can see here uh, the checkpoint command, I specified checkpoint with MANA. So this one actually is used to do additional checkpointing before your job hits the wall limit. So let's say if your, your job, you know, the checkpoint overhead, let's say 10 minutes, then you can specify in this, um, in this JavaScript, you specify the checkpoint overhead over at here. Here, that 10 minutes would be 600 um, seconds you put there. Then 10 minutes before your job hit the wall limit, you can do additional checkpoint by specifying command over here. So um, this one actually is a small wrapper for EMTCP command, which can do remote checkpointing. So it will do uh, one more time. So this JavaScript is written as you ask for you know, periodic checkpointing. So every one hour you want it to do one. And then now about the job get terminated, you do one more time. Optionally, if your checkpoint overhead is high, you may want to remove that and only do once before the job hit the wall limit. So there is a trade-off then, you know, it's a, there is some balance to make here. Um, so, uh, I wrote down each you know, component in detail. So the variable time job flow chart is like this. User submit a single JavaScript, and then batch system will look for backfill opportunity, and then start the job earlier with a smaller uh, time limit. And then it will run until that time, about the, the job hit the wall limit, and then batch system send the signal to the job, and then the job will suspend its execution uh, and then will 
you take a series of actions. So one is if you do additional checkpointing, if you require, uh, require it, and then it will update the remaining wall time, or it should recue the job first, recue the job and then update the wall time. And then batch, batch system sees a, a little bit shortened wall, wall time, I mean the runtime unit request now, but it will do this again until it's uh, the job completes or desired wall time achieved. And then the result is available for user to check in. So the good thing of this variable time JavaScript is you just submit one uh, JavaScript and then check the result. So additionally, with MANA, you can actually get you know, all the output and the result exactly the, you know, the same as the uninterrupted ones. So it is even better. So this is the two comparison. So variable time JavaScript, it works with internal checkpoint and support. So I think many VASP users, they, they have adopted this script before, but one of the difficulties is that the CR overhead is not very predictable, especially VASP when it's in the, in during in the one like ionic step, so-called, it needs to complete that step and then write something out, some the checkpoint file out and then quit. But this time, depending on where the execution is, the overhead is hard to uh, predict. But now with MANA, basically it all depends on the, how much the memory you use. And sure, it depends on file system performance, but it should be more predictable. So it's easier to use with, uh, to use with this variable time JavaScript. And then the additional advantage is that all, all output files after multiple checkpoint restart will be exactly the same as the job that runs without interruption. That's actually pretty good because when bus jobs run with this variable time JavaScript before, the it output file keep get written uh, before it gets terminated. So users, um, have to deal with those output files as needed, but with the manner because it can check all the open files at point of checkpointing. So at the restart, it will go back to that point and then continue to proceed. So it's, it's much cleaner um, here. So as a summary, uh, the manner is uh, still experimental, but uh, um, we, we can say MANA it works with MPI applications on poly. And the benefits of um, using checkpoint is uh, increased job throughput and then also the large charging discount. Um, but this one you need to use with Flask QoS and the capability of uh, running jobs of any event. So if you want to run weeks and months to run, probably you can just, you know, let's say your application is robust, then you can just submit one JavaScript and then wait. And then also uh, you can prepare for future workloads on the NERSC systems. Variable time JavaScript is, uh, is very useful and, uh, you know, you can automate the whole process. Uh, so you are encouraged to experiment with your production workloads. But I want to emphasize again, this is still experimental. So our plan is by the end of this summer, we can confidently say it works with you know, many applications. You know. Our plan is we enable top applications one by one. So VASP is our number one code. So I mean, it, it should be in a better position now, but we welcome those bug report and feature requests. Um, so we can improve the tool and uh, make it more robust in production. Uh, some resource and acknowledge and thank you for your attention. Next part is hands-on. Uh, so we have uh, some notes reserved for training. This is one hour uh, hands-on. So we reserved the computer node a little bit longer than the hands-on session. So you have a time to do more uh, experiments. And then when you run this evaluation, you can do, um, you need to add this to be able to use the reservation. So I provided a small code called Jacobi. And from there you can 
look at that simple instruction so you can do interactive um, one and just to feel how it works. I think that could be the purpose of this one hour hands-on and later you can uh, practice with your own code. I think that's all and I think I can answer some questions um, if you have any.